Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder All Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about the La Nina coming and what all that means down the road. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at the Climate uh, Prediction Center. We are officially under what they call a La Nina watch. And what all that means, if you recall, we were in a La Nina last year. Uh, it originally started right around September 10th time frame, and it lasted all the way through the winter months. And then we switched into what we are in now, an Enzo neutral, right around the end of March. And we've been there essentially ever since. Uh, but what looks like we actually are going to be going back to a La Nina, which we, we'd have a back-to-back -back fall and winter La Ninas. So if you take a look at the chart right now, we're in an Enzo neutral. It is favored to continue through the rest of the summer. Uh, but as we transition into that fall, uh, fall time frame, that September to November season, we have a 66% probability of a La Nina forming, and that would actually last uh, through fall as a uh, winter again, like what happened last year you can definitely see the chart uh in the in the gray shaded area that is what that we're in a uh, enzo neutral currently uh but the blue is your la nina and by, by the time we get into that september october november time frame we are favorable to uh, be in a la nina by then and it looks to build as we go deeper into the fall uh into the and the winter months so if we look, if we zoom in and take a look at some of the uh, uh, sea surface anomalies, uh, typically when uh, a minimum threshold for the the Nino 3.4, you have to have at least plus five or minus five to be classified uh, as an Enzo neutral. And we can you can definitely see we're in a, a minus 0.4. That is the lower end of an Enzo neutral. So we're just about there to creep out of that range and trending towards. A La Nina again. You can actually see some of the sea surface uh, temperature anomalies out here in the equatorial Pacific. Typically, you have uh, much below average temperatures out here in the equatorial Pacific, and you can definitely see the trend from the first week in July. There's not much cooler water depicted in the blue shaded colors, but as we trend deeper into July, you can actually see some of the some of the blue starting to pop up and really starting to enhance as we go deeper into July. So you can see it slowly uh, trending towards a La Nina type look. And so if you take a look at the latest uh, sea surface temperatures as of the August 3rd timeframe, you can definitely see here's the trend. I mean, it's predominantly trending back, eventually heading towards uh, La Nina. We're almost essentially there. And here's the, here's the indication of the waters out here in the equatorial Pacific along the equator. Look at the blues here, really starting to amplify and kind of deepen. Typically, uh, your, the uh, jet stream typically lifts up in this uh, type of environment. Uh, so you have a less probability as, uh, you know, kind of winds come across uh, to enhance uh, the southern jet stream. But right now, look at the t difference in temperatures of the sea surface temperatures out here in the Gulf of Mexico. Man, it's really amped up since we've been in a, a quieter phase. Uh, we haven't had any tropical development for the last uh, couple, couple of weeks uh, so it has these waters really settling down. There hadn't been any upwelling. So this is just priming the pump for, for what may be to come for a very uh, active time frame. But look at, the, look at the trend in temperatures here, the sea surface temperatures off the Pacific uh, Northwest. You can definitely see the much cooler waters right along the coast. And that's been one of the reasons why uh, they haven't been able to get any much rain uh, out here in the Pacific Northwest, but look back behind it. We've got some well above average uh, temperature anomalies building and trending, and that's actually going to be playing a key role uh, going forward as we go trending back into the fall uh, in the winter months. So if we take a look at the overall uh, Southern Oscillation Index too. This again, this is your southern jet stream down here in the equatorial Pacific. You can see the trend where we've been uh, pretty much 
a right around zero is your Enzo neutral phase, which we've been predominantly in currently right now. Indication in June, it was right at zero. That's the 30 day moving average, but man, that's been really amped up just in the last month of July. Now we're trending towards a 16 on the 30 day moving average. And typically your minimum threshold for a La Nina would be a, a, a plus eight on the 90 day moving average. So we're literally almost there. So what, what does all that mean, you know, kind of going forward? So let's take a look at the seven day temperature change for the sea surface anomalies. You can definitely see it was pretty, pretty chilly out here in the MDR region. That is uh, somewhat trying to subside. We've got still some dust to contend with, but that will dwindle over time. And, but you can definitely see some of these uh, sea surface temperatures are trending further, uh, you know, amplifying a little bit uh, warmer out here in the MDR region, especially along the coast. And this is a concern uh, going forward as the trend looks like to be, you know, well above average uh, sea surface temperatures just along the coast. And that's probably one of the reasons why they've seen such above average precipitation anomalies for the last several months is these trending uh, sea surface temperatures right along the coast were able to pick up that water vapor and dump it inland. So they've had a lot of heavy rain, especially along the coastal communities out here into the Gulf, into the Southeast. But man, take a look at the, the sea surface temperatures currently right now on uh, Tuesday out here in the Atlantic. Typically, you really only need about 80 degrees to you know, have uh, tropical storm development uh, come to fruition. And this is easily going to be able to handle any type of tropical tropical system that comes in this particular environment. But as you get closer into the uh, coastal coast regions into land, you can definitely see, man, it's a it's a really concern. Some of these sea surface temperatures are trending into the upper 80s, if not almost 90 degrees along the coast of uh, Florida. And the Gulf of Mexico is actually a lot, a lot warmer than than even even the Atlantic. So yes, the trend is there. We've got plenty of sea surface high temperatures to work with of any type of tropical development that might come uh, into the Atlantic or the, the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico. So right now, I, I, I had a lot of comments. You know, why is you know why has the Pacific been so active and the Atlantic has been so dead? Well, it's simple terms is the enhancement of the MJO, uh, which we'll go over. But right now, man, it's just a, a trifecta out here, and we also have another storm that probably is going to form uh, pretty soon. So it's been very active in the Pacific. But all this will be trending over towards the Atlantic side as we get into uh, probably that second week of August, especially as we get into the mid middle August uh, time frame. Uh, so the behind all this is what they call the MJO, which is your madden julie oscillation. Uh, so typically in simple terms, right now, the MJO is what is what they called an, an enhancement phase of a connecting phase as the winds at the surface converge the air is pushed up so you have upward rising motion air and that is able to have those thunderstorms rise and potentially create those tropical type environment this is the type of air air mass that the pacific is under right now and when you have when the when thunderstorms try to rise and they hit uh, the upper levels and they have downward motion air, they have sinking air and it squashes a lot of the thunderstorm uh, activity. That's what we're seeing. That's what we're experiencing right now on the, in the Atlantic. But the MJO moves eastward. And as it moves eastward, uh, it's going to be a little bit more conducive uh, to have the enhancement phase is going to be over on the Atlantic side as we get into that second and third week of August. So here's the MJO going forward. So here's here we are currently. This is August the 2nd through uh, September the 2nd. And right now we are trending into a little bit more favorable phases of the MJO. And what that looks like, typically when we get to phase eight, phase one, phase two, and three, those are almost prime time uh, tropical storm, tropical system type development. And here we are currently right now trending in phase eight 
So we're trending into a little bit more favorable phase. But as we go into that second, especially the middle of August here, here's August 14th, we're in prime time phase two. And that's where we were when uh, Elsa formed uh, and hit uh, Florida back on uh, you know July the sixth. So this is what the this is what the model looks like when you are in phase true phase two. You have above average uh, precipitation along the coastal communities, and it's a pretty active phase for tropical development. But you also have below average temperatures can conducive of you know with all the cloud cover and with all the rain that could be around for the south and the southeast while you are into phase two so that's what it would look like uh when you are in a uh, phase two and as we trend to phase three this is what that would look like as well so here's here's the different phases and what all that means so right now uh like i mentioned uh we came out of phase two when tropical when tropical storm elsa hit and look, depicting you know on the on the uh, orange and the red shaded areas, that is a lot of upward rising motion air. The blue is the indicative of some sinking air. So we've been into the less active phases of four and five, six and seven, but here's phase eight, where we are currently right now. We're going into you can see a lot more blues trying to show up on the map, and then as we trend. I'm sorry, a lot more, a uh, lot more uh, oranges and reds showing up on the map closer in, close, closer in to along the coast, taking advantage of some of that higher sea surface temperatures out here in Florida, the Gulf of Mexico and along the coast. And then as we trend into phase two, it just even amplifies further and a lot of the Atlantic, the, uh, the, the Caribbean, as well as the Gulf of Mexico. Now, definitely the concern uh, going forward, the last time we were in an MJO phase two was back when Hurricane Harvey made landfall in August. So when in the last time the MJO was in a phase two development in August, we actually had Hurricane Harvey that made landfall on August the 25th, 2017, and also Hurricane Laura just last year, back on August the 27th, you can see where the MJO was at that time frame. It's depicted in the green shaded color right here. And here's that time frame right around the 25th. It was literally right going into phase two, which is that prime time, uh, you know, hurricane formation. And then we also had, uh, you know, Hurricane Laura, which which was uh, back on August the 27th last year, was also trending right here into phase two. So that is definitely a concern uh, going forward. And I don't need to tell you what happened with those storms because a lot of you guys know that was were two big impacts for uh, the United States. So definitely going forward, this is a concern too, what, what you look for. Right now, we've got well below average temperatures in the, the Northwest. We're just go coming out of a pretty strong cold front for August standards. But the trend going forward as the ridge will start to come back and we are gonna be starting to increase the temperatures over time into this week and going into next week. And by the time we get into that August 18th timeframe, when we are in that phase two uh, development, we see a ridge over the top, and that is a, not a good sign underneath, because typically when you have a ridge over the top, that just amplifies and helps lower the pressures uh, underneath. So where a lot of the pieces of the puzzle are starting to come together, uh, the dominoes effect are starting to come together a pretty active time frame as we trend towards uh, August and uh, going in deeper into August, uh, especially with this concern of the ridge starting to build over the Northeast and over uh, Southeastern uh, Canada uh, in, in the later terms. But in the short term, look what the anomalies look like for the next uh, 18, uh, for the next uh, you know 15 days. It's definitely implying that we could have uh, some sort of uh, tropical development along the coast, hinting at going into those more active phases with those uh, higher precipitation anomalies along the coastal regions, along the, the Texas and the Southeast coast and along the, uh, the, the Eastern seaboard as well. So there's already definitely some signs of indications of some of the pieces of the puzzle are starting to match up of uh, tropical trouble, you know, down the road.
But going forward, what does a La Nina look like going forward as we trend towards the fall and then the winter months? So typically, you've got this uh, Pacific jet uh, down here in the south, south, southern regions tends to enhance and lift further up northward. And I showed you some of the some of the uh, precipitation, uh, you know, sea surface anomalies along the coast. I feel with the combination, once the once the Pacific jet starts to get active, it's going to help take advantage of some of that well above average uh, uh, sea surface anomalies and dump it in back into the Pacific Northwest. So I do feel a trend going forward as we go into the fall and the winter months uh, that the ab above average rains will come back. Uh, for the Pacific Northwest, typically you have a little bit more drier, drying out types uh, atmosphere along for the south because the Pacific jet lifts, lifts further north. And then you also have the polar jet lift way up north as well. That's able to drag down some of that uh, cooler and colder air. And with the combination of the enhancement of uh, above average rain, obviously some of that would transition to snow as we go deeper into that fall and going going into uh, trending into winter as the La Nina looks to build. So in the short term for the rest of August, here's the latest update from the National Hurricane Center for, uh, for August. And they've kept the below average anomalies on average over those 30 days trending what they have been for uh, Texas and parts of the Southeast as well, because they do feel Going into August, we're going into those more active phases, which would keep us cloudy and keep us the above average rains around. And that's the depiction of uh, what they're what they're forecasting uh, for some of the some of the uh, higher uh, rain probabilities going into the month of August that we uh, that we have you know above average rain. So that's definitely indicating that we could have some tropical trouble along the coast from Texas all the way up into the Northeast as well. So this is a, definitely a concern. The modeling is trending that way as well. But beyond that, going into some of the longer range outlooks of, if we look at the next uh, 46 days, by the time we get into September, we are uh, more favored to be in a La Nina or getting close into that La Nina category by then. And with the La Nina, like I showed you with that jet stream lift and you tend to have some drying out on, on average standards. So the modeling is actually trending, having a little bit of a, a better look towards a La Nina type look uh, going into that September timeframe. And then the, the above average rains that would be indicative for a La Nina to be trending back towards uh, the Pacific Northwest and trending into Idaho and to Montana and to Colorado again with that active polar Pacific jet, jet further up northward, keeping the above average rains uh, to the north. And then going forward, looking at some of the seasonal guidance as well for that September, that October, November timeframe with above average uh, rains along the coastal communities indicative of above average uh, tropical season, but also the trend of the of the southern jet, uh, uh, you know, getting squashed and having the uh, the drier conditions start to move back into the southwest southwest communities as well as the uh, four portions of the deep south as far as the, the you know have a trend towards uh, less. Uh, you know, precipitation, but then the trend back towards which would be in a fit for the La Nina with above average precipitation for the Pacific Northwest and the northern regions of uh, California. So that as looks like what's to come with the La Nina building in the, in the days ahead and the months ahead as well as we go into fall and the winter months. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.